Hello to all of you. I hope you are still doing really well and I want you to take this time to learn about the rock cycle. So this diagram is located on page number six of your earth science reference table. And specifically, this diagram is actually really helpful. It tells you how all of the rocks form without having to memorize that information yourself. It provides you the processes and even teaches you how one type of rock can turn into a different type of rock through the rock cycle. So to start, let's learn about the different components of this diagram. So here we have um, in anything that's a rectangle is going to be a type of rock. Anything that's in an ellipse is going to be an ingredient that is used to make up the rock. And anything with an arrow is a, a process used to form that rock. So let's start with the types of rocks. Here we have three rectangles because we have only three rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Our ingredients in the ellipses are either magma or sediments in this case. Those are used to make specific rocks. And finally, in arrows are the processes. Please note that I did not put an arrow around every process because it was just getting a little too much, but anything with an arrow has the name of the process on it so that you can see how to make specific types of rocks. So now I'm going to go through some examples of how to form specific rock types. We're going to start with sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks all need to start out with the ingredient of sediments, which is emphasized in this picture. Sediments must undergo processes such as deposition and burial. That means dropping the sediments and getting them uh, buried in piles. Then eventually those sediments are compacted and cemented together. And then you end up with a sedimentary rock. So this chart is useful because if you just follow the ingredients and the arrows into the sedimentary rock rectangle, you'll know exactly how the rock formed. So to summarize here, to make a sedimentary rock, Sediments are deposited, that means dropped, then they're buried, compacted, and cemented together, and then you get your sedimentary rock. So to get an igneous rock, it all starts with magma. Lava is not listed here as an ingredient, but lava would also be appropriate in this case. The magma must undergo the process of solidification, that means cooling and becoming a solid, and then you end up with your igneous rock. So to summarize, to make an igneous rock, you must have the magma undergo solidification, that means becoming a solid, and then you end up with the igneous rock. Now, this next uh, diagram for metamorphic rocks seems complicated, but I need you to remember that metamorphic rocks all form from heat and pressure, and the ingredients for metamorphic rocks are actually pre-existing rocks. So if we start with sedimentary rock rectangle and follow the arrow down to the metamorphic rock rectangle, you will see that heat and pressure creates a sedimentary rock and turns it into metamorphic. You can also start at the igneous rock rectangle Put that igneous rock under heat and pressure, follow the heat and pressure arrows into the metamorphic rock box. You can also have a metamorphic rock, follow the arrow up, heat and pressure can turn a metamorphic rock into a different metamorphic rock. A common example is metamorphic rock slate turning into phyllite. more heat and pressure, phyllite turns to schist, more heat and pressure, schist turns into the rock gneiss. So to summarize, to make a metamorphic rock, you can have any pre-existing rock. It could be igneous, sedimentary, or even another metamorphic rock put under heat and pressure, and then you get a new metamorphic rock. I'm going to end today by showing you guys an example of how do you go from a metamorphic rock to a sedimentary rock. Now, the first step is to start in the box for the rock that you're starting with. So we start with metamorphic rock. You follow the arrows. In order to get a sedimentary rock, ultimately that metamorphic rock needs to be broken down into pieces of sediments through the processes of weathering and erosion. So you can follow those arrows up till you eventually get to the ingredient for sediment. And that's the result of the weathering and erosion. If metamorphic rock is broken down into smaller pieces, that's how you create sediments. Now, to make a sedimentary rock, those sediments must be deposited, buried, and compacted and cemented together and then ultimately you end up with a sedimentary rock.
When you do your activity today, I'm going to give you different examples and different starting points for how to go to one rock type to another. The key to this chart is start at the specific rock listed, follow the arrows, and look at the processes and ingredients involved into making that rock. Good luck, and let me know if you have any questions.